right, everyone, welcome back. So as you can see, we moved things around a little bit. We moved the Hebu off the uh, the table here because it's a little big to be doing this. Mm -hmm. And now I want to talk about the transmitters. And we got two different types of transmitters that are here. We have, uh, this here is the Spectrum DXS. This is what came in the ready-to-fly version of the, uh, the Hebu Jet. So if you were to buy the ready-to-fly version, it comes with a jet, battery, charger, and the transmitter. So you don't have to buy anything additional. And this transmitter is a fantastic way to get started in, in the hobby. It will do everything we need it to do for the Habu uh, jet. And it's a, uh, we, we consider like a, uh, like a five channel uh, transmitter. It's gonna have um, the four channels, which are the main ones. And we're gonna talk about that, which is um, throttle. It's gonna have rudder. It's gonna have aileron and it's going to have elevator and then it's got one more for um we consider like for the safe operation so that's a, a basic ready to fly version of a uh, of a transmitter one step up from that is what i have here and this is my my very very old and trusty dx6 this is this is getting to be pretty close to almost obsolete now with the new nx series that spectrum has but this thing has served me very well and we're going to use this to kind of, um, I have it already bound to my little P51 Mustang here, and we're gonna use that to talk about what these, um, the controls do. And when I talk about a, the number of channels, okay? This is basically a, a, a four to five channel, uh, really it's, a, it's a, like a, it's a four channel uh, transmitter plus an extra for safe. This one here, the DX6 is a six channel. And when I talk about channels, what I'm talking about is it can, can control that many things, okay? Mm -hmm. So I can control six functions with my DX6. Um, and I can control throttle, I can control the ailerons, the elevator, the rudder. There's my typical four. Those are the four you really need to fly. Uh, the rudder is, eh, some planes don't have it, that's a three channel. So if you have all these control surfaces, you, only, you need four channels to operate. Um, if I have flaps, they are gonna be the, uh, the fifth channel. Mm -hmm. And if I have retractable landing gear, it's the sixth channel. So um, the number of channels relates to how many things I can control on the airplane. Okay. So with that said, we're going to go into kind of what these different um, pieces and parts do here. Okay. So I'm going to have you uh, just kind of hold the, uh, the P-51 Mustang up here. And you can just tilt it on an angle here so we can, can see it and just kind of hold it in that orientation. And I'm going to be doing this backwards, which is extremely odd to do since um, <laughs> I normally never fly it backwards like this. But let's say we're looking down at the uh, at our, our six channel on the spectrum here, right? And I want to move the ailerons. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be moving this stick back and forth. And you can see, if you want to tilt that a little bit more, uh, Logan, so you can uh, kind of, so people can see it. There we go. So this is moving... These are some very old, noisy servos, by the way. But moving the stick back and forth is what moves the ailerons, right? So as we talked about before, so if I'm going to be going into a, uh, say I want to make a right turn here, I'm going to move the aileron stick to the right. And as you can see, the right aileron goes up and the left aileron goes down. So I'm just going to kind of show that a little bit closer here so you guys can see it. So see how the ailerons move up and down? They move opposite of each other. And if you remember before, the airplane is flying along mm -hmm. and I'm gonna go right aileron and the right one goes up, left goes down. And what's happening is, is the right side, this side here, the aileron at the up position is spoiling the lift. It's dropping this side down while the other side going down, more camber, mm -hmm. more camber means more what? It means more, but more camber means more lift. More camber means more lift. So that side's gonna go up, right? So if I wanna bank the airplane, I use my ailerons, and in this orientation, I'm gonna be banking off to the, to the right, okay? And if I wanna bank to the left, left stick movement moves the airplane this way. You can see it moves the ailerons the opposite direction. So if you're looking at your, your transmitter here. We'll just go ahead and use this one again. So if you're using your transmitter, 
and we consider like this is the standard setup that you can change this but we're not going to even talk about how to get that confusing um if you want to bank the airplane it's going to be your right thumb on the right stick back and forth okay so turning it to the right banks to the right pushing it to the left banks to the left okay so now that we have established how to bank the aircraft I want to talk about how are we going to pitch the airplane. Now, if I want to pitch the airplane up to climb or pitch the airplane down to descend, what control surface does that? You would use the elevators. You use the elevators. And for the elevators, it's the same stick as the, as the ailerons, except for we're going to um, push it forward or pull it back. So once you hold the airplane in this orientation here, okay? And we're going to watch what happens when I push... So we're going to be using the this same stick, okay? We're, we're just, just talking about the stick on the right. And if I pitch, push the stick forward, you can see that the, the, um, the elevator moves in the down position. And when it moves in the down position, it's creating more camber, which is producing what? More, more lift. And if it produces more lift, it's going to want to lift up, which is going to pitch the airplane down, right? So if you want to put the airplane downward, you push the stick forward, the airplane goes down. Mm -hmm. Well, wait a minute. What if the ground is coming now and I need to pull up? So I'm going to pull the control stick back to me and boom, now the airplane goes up and you can see how that elevator moves back and forth, right? So if you want to go higher, you pull back on the stick and if you want to go lower, you push down on the stick. Now, you can also do this with coordination with the throttle, too. So if I want to pull the airplane up to gain more altitude, I will pull back on the stick, and I'm going to advance the throttle. I'm not going to actually advance the throttle here because, um, well, it's, it's actually hooked up right now, and I don't have a throttle cut on my little UMX. So. so if I want to climb the airplane, I'm going to pull back on the stick, in fact, we're actually going to do it. We're going to fire it up here. We're going to push up and produce more throttle. Okay? And if I'm going to descend the airplane, um, I push the nose forward by pushing the elevator stick forward. And I will usually try to power back on the throttle a little bit. Um, if you're obviously going to go into a dive to build more airspeed and you really want to come flying in, then great. You're going to want to add some throttle. For a beginner pilot, I do not suggest pitching the airplane forward, and mashing the throttle forward. Mm -hmm. You are gonna come into the ground really, really quick. We don't want that. But if you do wanna climb the airplane, because if you remember before when we talked about the aerodynamics, right? So let's say we're flying along and we pull back on our stick here, but we're going slow, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what happens is the airplane is gonna be sitting up like this and you're gonna see it starting to waffle back and forth. The wing is no longer producing lift. And when the wing doesn't produce lift, what's that called? It's called gravity, and it'll go down. The stall, the it's stall. called the stall. Gravity is what will pull it, because gravity is yeah. always pulling down on it, right? So the airplane's going up, but you don't have enough airspeed. Mm -hmm. It pitches, no, uh, the nose goes forward. You now are heading right towards the ground. Mm -hmm. So in that situation, you actually want to push the elevator. You want to push it, the nose forward a little bit more to make sure you kind of keep it down in this angle, build up your airspeed, apply some power, gently pull back out again and that's called stall recovery okay and the last one we're going to talk about here is the rudder and the rudder you can see me moving the rudder back and forth here once again very old noisy servos in this mm -hmm. <laughs> this p51s have a lot of flights on it but you can see that the rudder moving back and forth and just like the aileron if we want to move it um i want to move it to the right i go right on the stick left on the stick so i'll have you Hold that up again, uh, Logan. Okay, and we're gonna go right on the stick, and you see the yellow, the rudder moves to the right, left on the stick, the yellow, the the rudder moves to the left. So if I'm gonna be going into a turn, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by moving the the aileron over here to the right, and then I'm gonna move the rudder a little bit to the right, and then I'm gonna pull back just a little bit on the elevator, okay? And that motion, actually it's about this, this much, just a few degrees either direction, will actually do a couple things. It will take the airplane, it will begin to bank the airplane, the rudder will begin to yaw the airplane, and the elevator will, will kind of complete the turn. And that's how we make a coordinated turn 
using our control surfaces and this um, controller here. So a little bit of review. Why don't you go ahead and grab the uh, the controller here that we use for the um, uh, for the Habu, mm -hmm. and I want you to uh, just show me and review um, which of the sticks moves the aircraft in a in a bank orientation. It would remove the right stick yep. to the left or right. Correct. So if I want to turn, if I want to bank the airplane to the right, I use the what stick? The right stick. Right stick. And move it horizontally. But if I want to go to the right, which way do I want to do it? You do it to the right. To the right. And if I want to bank the airplane to the left, I use which stick? You use the right stick and then pu push it towards the, the left side. You got it. So and if I want to pitch the airplane up, You'd pull back on the right stick. You pull back on the right stick, and if I want to push it nose down, you push forward on the right stick. You got it. And if I want to yaw the airplane, which control sir, which one does that? The left stick, and you'd have you'd want to move it horizontally. That's correct. So if I'm going to go into a turn, let's say I'm going to take a, I'm going to go into a right turn, and I want to make it a coordinated turn. So I'm gonna, I want to use the the right stick with a little bit of right pressure. So that's going to pitch the airplane like this. And then I'm going to add a little bit of right rudder, okay, which is going to kind of yaw the plane. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to pull back a little bit on the elevator, and that's going to kind of tighten up the turn, all right? And that is how you uh, go ahead and turn the aircraft. And if you want to go go faster, it is what stick? It is the left stick. You push back or forward. Yep. So forward. There we go. That is to advance the uh, the throttle. So obviously we're not going to do too much of that yeah. in, in, inside of a inside of the house. We're going to get into more on that in the simulator. So uh, that kind of covers what the basic uh, control does. You have a number of other switches. Oops. Sorry about that. That was my bad. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you have a number of other switches that are on, on here as well. And these control such things as your rates. There is high low high rates and low rates, and these are located on this switch here. And at high rate, what it does is it allows for 100% um, movement of all your surfaces. So if you want to make the airplane very responsive, you want to move those a lot. Mm -hmm. If you want to maybe make the airplane a little bit more sedate or softer or easier to fly, you move that to what we consider low rate and it's now 70 percent of the full travel is available to you okay mm -hmm. now if you have a programmable this is considered a programmable computer style radio i can go inside here and i can change those settings so maybe i want my high rates at 80 percent and my low rates at 60 or whatever it may be you could program that with this style radio here mm -hmm. this style here it is dedicated to just uh 100 or 70 percent and, and that's done um, on the switch here, okay? And there is, um, hold on one second, I'm gonna grab the manual because we are gonna talk about the Habu here and it's a, set up a little bit different than I have my DX6. So I'm gonna actually turn off the P51 here and to do that, um, I'm gonna get the battery undone first and turn off my uh, my DX6 here. And I'm just gonna go grab the, uh, the manual real quick because I don't wanna screw these up because the way I have mine set up, because this is a programmable one, is different than how Logan's gonna fly with the DXS. So I'll be back in one second. All right, so we're back here now, and I got the manual on. And the manual's a fantastic way to learn which control, you know, which of these switches does what. So um, I do wanna go back to the DXS here, the one that came with the Hebu. I got the Hebu uh, manual out here. And it's got a couple switches on here that I have programmed totally different than mine. So. Uh, the throttle cut is on the back side right here, okay? So different spot than mine. So a throttle cut, you wanna make sure as, as you operate around the airplane, especially a prop plane, you wanna have the throttle cut on to make sure you don't accidentally get your fingers caught in the propeller mm -hmm. or get your hands caught. If you were to bump this throttle switch, like say, hey Logan, hey, grab a hold of this thing, and he hits the, the throttle switch, mm -hmm. and I don't have my throttle cut activated, somebody's gonna get hurt or the airplane's gonna go flying off a bench. So your throttle cut is located on the back here. We already talked that this, this one here is your rates. It is a uh, high rate and uh, low rate. High rate, 100%, low rate, 70%. High rates, more agility, mm -hmm. faster reaction. Low rate, a little bit lower, a little bit more sedate. I fly mine more towards on low rate. 
but I fly, t I tend to fly like an old man, I guess. So uh, for me, I enjoy an airplane that's a little bit easier to fly around. Um, on the other side here, we have, um, let's see, where is the, okay, so uh, the other one we have here is on the top here, and this is actually going to be your, what we'll consider you like your flight mode switch, if you have, when we have safe. Uh, the beginner mode, intermediate mode, and experience mode, and you control that through a three position switch here, and then on the back side, you have a momentary switch that if you get yourself into trouble, and nobody's going to come rescue you, and gravity is taken over, and the airplane is tumbling out of control, you pull that that switch on the back here, boom, airplane will level out in uh, beginner beginner mode. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be important in training. Uh, but I have a feeling, knowing you, you probably will never have to worry about ever to use it. So there's a lot of buttons and switches that go on here, but the main ones we want to talk about today were with the control ones, which we have covered. Mm -hmm. Now, when we transfer from the table here and we head to the flight sim, you'll be able to figure out which one of these, because we're going to walk through it, which of these control sticks move what on the airplane and you'll be able to actually mm -hmm. fly it. So, all right, that covers what we wanted to get into when it came to the, the transmitters. Like I said, this is really the basics, right? There's so much more that goes into these transmitters that uh, we're not going to get into it all today. But just a uh, kind of a reminder, uh, these are transmitters. The transmitter talks to a receiver that's in the airplane, and the antenna here is what kind of communicates mm -hmm. those things. That's the radio control um, portion of it.